Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to introduce you to the new native time tracking options that we now have available in Asana. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a question in the comments below. And if you would like help with setting up or optimizing Asana for your business, if you've tried using it on your own, but you're not really getting the most out of the tool, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. So here I am in my, uh, just my demo account today. And to access these new time tracking features, first I'm gonna go to one of my projects. And I'm gonna click on the customize menu here. And you may see this new uh, time your work option in all your custom field settings. So before you kind of had to set up your own fields for estimated hours and tracking actual hours. Now, if I just click this, this section, Asana will add estimated time and actual time as two individual custom fields in, in this project. So this is added at a at the project level by adding it to this project. Uh, it's, it's not in other projects. I do need to add it to each project where I want to track my time. So you can see I've got this estimated time and actual time columns. Now, if I click on a task, we can see those fields here as well. So estimated time typically is used for how long do we want to spend on this task? So I can say, right, we want to spend an hour. Now, even though if I clear that field, even though you will only see suggested options up to two, two hours and 30 minutes, you can type in whatever you want. So if I want to do four colon 30, I can manually type in four and a half hours if I want. So that's your estimated time, fairly straightforward. Then we have our actual hours here, which is where we can record how long we've actually spent on the task. Now this appears to be a form of retroactive time tracking where I fill in how long I spent on the task after I've done the work. So if I wanna say, you know, I did 30 minutes, uh, maybe I'll backdate that to yesterday, and maybe I did an hour today, I can I can keep putting in these, maybe I'll do, you know, another 15 minutes today. So I'm, I'm tracking blocks of time here, and then it's gonna sum up to an hour 45. So generally I'm gonna fill that in after I've done the work. Whereas with other time trackers by comparison, like Harvest, I can, I can start my harvest time tracker, I can pick a project that I'm linking this with, and then I start my timer. So it's a different form of time tracking where you start the timer and then you stop when you finish the work. Uh, depending on your business and how you want to use the time that's being tracked will determine if you should use maybe harvest, if you're gonna be billing for those hours and you want to actually generate an invoice from those hours, or in Asana, if you're really just sort of tracking more for productivity reasons, just to see how long was spent on the work, this more retroactive form of time tracking is pretty good. So we've got those two custom fields now. What can we use do with this data? So once I've estimated and tracked my time, what can I do with this? Well, firstly, on the estimated time uh, level, if we go to one of my portfolios, I can use that estimated time as a way of tracking um, and forecasting the work in my portfolio. If I go back, here's some work here. Now, if I go to my um, capacity settings at the moment, or historically, we've had to use our own custom fields. Now, if I edit my capacity, oh no, uh, if I go edit effort, sorry, the estimated time custom field is now my recommended uh, way of tracking workload. So now, Asana is going to ask, do you want to add that estimated time field to all of the projects in this portfolio? So I can click yes, then I can set everyone's capacity per week. So I would say uh, this is asking for minutes. Uh, or let's do let's do 40, 40 hours. There we go. Um, everyone's going to have 40 hours of capacity per week. And so now what I can do is I can click into these tasks and, in, uh, and, and now I can use that estimated hours field for tracking how long tasks are gonna take. So that's a really useful way of planning people's workload and how much work they have on their plate. And then to report on what we actually did and actual time spent on different projects, I could do that from the reporting options here. If I click into one of my dashboards, I can add a chart and maybe I'll do a custom chart here. And now if I change my Y axis, I have these new time entry options. So let's change this to actual time. And I actually think I quite like leaving that as project for now. So we'll leave the X axis as by project. And so now I can see how long we've spent on uh, different projects. So let's create that. And this is gonna automatically update 
as we track our time, me as the business owner, I can look at this and see what projects are we spending more time on than others. So that's a quick look at the Asana time tracking options. As you can see, it's a fairly straightforward, simple little feature at the moment, um, but uh, I expect Asana will probably improve on it based on user feedback soon. Now, as I mentioned briefly in the video, I think third-party time trackers like Harvest or EverHour or Toggle, T-Metric, I think they still have their place depending on if you're going to be using the time that you're tracking more for invoicing and billing purposes. I think those options are still worth considering. But for just tracking our workload and, and how long do we spend on certain tasks, the Asana, uh, the native option that we have now is, uh, is a really welcomed feature. If you have any questions about what I've covered here today, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would look, like to take a deeper look at this feature and watch a more detailed training lesson on how to do time tracking in Asana, then check out the link in the description below where you can learn more about my Asana program, which includes very in-depth video training, uh, more in-depth than the YouTube videos that I do here. One more time, thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.